Okay, so this is just a very quick tutorial for the uh, mapping um, lab. So what we're going to do again, we're going to kind of continue in the vein of digital archaeology as we have been. And uh, what you're going to do is to digitally resurvey uh, an area that I actually did some pedestrian survey in in 2017, actually in 2015 as well. So you can read through the lab handout to get a little sense of uh, what I want you to do. But basically what I want you to do is to resurvey it and then to draw a sketch map uh, and then to do a little bit of an analysis from it. And the tool that you're going to use is Google Earth Web. So you'll just click the link right here that's in the, uh, in the lab handout to Ash Bullock uh, Mapping Exercise. And it will take you over here to this Google Earth uh, Web interface. And you'll see this area outlined in yellow, which is the project region. And where this is, if you zoom all the way out, you'll get a better sense of where in the world we actually are. We're in southeast Kazakhstan. And the project area is one of a series of these, they're called alluvial fans. They're big stream valleys that drain this tall mountain chain here called the Tian Shan, which is, if you zoom out, you'll see it's the very back end of the Himalayan plateau. And they drain inwards. This is a, a reservoir called um, Isikul. This is, uh, sorry, not Isikul. This is um, Kapshagai Reservoir. This is Isikul over here. This is the Ili River, and it drains all the way to uh, Lake Baikal, which is this big lake right here. But uh, Ashbulak is a pretty small, inconsequential little area. There's a small stream that it drains, you know, not too deep from the, this part of the mountains. And this is where we spent uh, a good month or so over the course of two field seasons, documenting a whole bunch of archaeological sites and taking some samples and uh, doing a lot of stuff, including geoarchaeology in this region. But what I want you to do is to sort of uh, use the satellite image that comes from uh, courtesy of Google Earth, which is GOI. It's a very, very high resolution um, orbiting satellite that takes images very frequently. And then they patch it together into this really nice, very high detailed mosaic. So to get a sense, you know, you're probably familiar with Google Earth images, but this is a small, smallish tree, right? and you get a sense of the resolution. Now you should be noticing that I zoomed in on this region right here and this is very interesting. This is the main archeological site in this particular valley. This is called a tortkul or a fort. And uh, I'm just sort of giving this away because this is the main feature. There's only one of them. It's the biggest site that there is. It probably dates to the medieval period, although we haven't dated it. Um, we haven't get, gotten any absolute dates on it. But we've dated it on the basis of pottery and other things that we discovered in the region. But you'll notice uh, in and around the Tortkul, there are other kinds of sites that you'll want to notice. So particularly like over here on the banks of the stream, you'll notice these sort of moundy things. And again, you have to look back at my lecture about remote sensing and get a sense of how to read some of these images. But the shadows are telling you that these are lumps of dirt, right? And these are other archaeological sites. Some of them are actually quite old. These are probably medieval and maybe Iron Age. Some of them are a little bit more recent. This is probably Soviet, these long skinny things. These are probably like, um, you know, animal pens from the Soviet period. Um, anyway, there are other, a couple other features to look at. These roundy things with the little holes at the top, these are Kurgan mounds. These are burials, elite burials, large moundy things. The little hole at the top is a looter pit from probably a long time ago. Um, also, you may notice little smaller lumpy things like this whole field right here. This is actually a cemetery. This is probably from the Mongol or the Turkic period. Each one of these little lumps is uh, an individual grave. And you'll notice that there may be th something superimposed. So here's a rectangular thing. And here's like a larger maybe Kurgan kind of mound. You'll look around here and you'll see some other kinds of things all around here. Now, I'm not asking you to detail every single little thing in, in your map, but you're going to want to do a pretty decent survey to see where there are concentrations of sites, and you'll notice them 
in certain areas and you'll notice that if you go up further you won't see very much in other parts of the landscape so you're going to want to do just a quick kind of swipe through within the bounds of the survey area to see what you can see then I'm going to ask you to make a sketch map of the survey area and you're just going to have to draw these sort of you know by hand and you might want to truncate it for example you don't necessarily have to draw the whole thing if there's nothing or not too much further to the north um, but the deal with the the sketch map is that you need to figure out a scale that you're going to want to draw it at and to do that the tool that you're going to want to use is this uh, measure distance uh, and what you do is you pick the tool up from here this little window pops up you tap where you want to start measuring and then you stretch it out to wherever you want to stop and you can see on the screen it tells you already and if you just tap it again it leaves it in place and the the measurement is recorded up here uh, now if you want to do like a whole perimeter you can just sort of keep tapping like that for example and now it has measured the whole perimeter and has told you the actual area of the torch school of course I wasn't being particularly um, <laughs> particularly precise. The whole point is that what you want to do at first is to, and you can start new to refresh it, get a sense of how big the area is. You might want to just sort of draw across it and see it's like 1500 meters. That's a kilometer and a half, so that's pretty big. And the tort cool we saw was about 80 meters on a side. And then uh, eventually, once you've drawn your map, you're going to want to measure some uh, average distances. So one thing that you can do for example, is to measure, you know, you might be interested in the measurement of a, the closest distance to the stream, 388 meters for this uh, particular site. Or if you zoom in and you pick one of these other sites, you might want to do like some average distances. So that's 40 meters for that one. And then you'll have to refresh again. And then you'll do another one. And it's like 100 meters and then you know refresh again you do the next one and you should be writing these down 70 meters and you'll take an average of this cluster of maybe habitation sites uh, you know the distance from there to the stream or what's the average distance from that these habitation sites to the Torkul or the distance from the Torkul to the nearest Kurgan mound that you can identify uh, and you can write down these measurements and you don't have to measure every single thing on the map but you should Figure out a couple interesting questions you want to know, like did they put the Tortkul in relationship to Kurgan Mounds, or did they put it in relationship to the stream, or in relationship to the uplands, and you might want to take a few measurements of those different kinds of things just to test out a few different hypotheses. And this is essentially doing your spatial analysis. So you basically have three uh, products and a write-up. First, you just want to zoom around and then make an inventory of different types of sites. To help you with that, I'm making this video, but I'm also giving you this link to uh, uh, some of the field photographs. And some of them you'll be able to uh, identify, some of them you won't. Some of them are smaller than others. Um, some of them are more obtrusive than others. But I'm just giving you some photographs to look at to help you figure out uh, you know, what it is that you might actually be looking at. Uh, it's still uploading right now, but I'm going to upload a drone movie, a movie that from the drone I flew over the region so that will help you get another sense of what you're actually looking at um, it's flying over this basic region here uh, and once you've done your inventory then you're going to want to draw your sketch map again you don't have to draw every everything but you need to come up with some system you got to have some labels or you got to have some symbols which will make your life a lot easier and if you do symbols you'll need a legend or a key and you'll need to put a title at the top of it and uh, make sure that everything is either labeled or shows up as a symbol in the legend. And then you'll want to do, do your measurements and use those in your write-up that you can read all about here in the lab handout. So that's basically it. Um, it should be reasonably straightforward, although you'll want to make sure you allocate enough time to do a reasonable survey and to get a good decent sketch map. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it has to be, you know, reasonably well done.